Hey everyone, Jamie here from TechnicalCafe.com. Happy New Year. Um, if you've been reading the Technical Cafe blog or following me on Twitter, um, you'll have noticed that I actually posted a favorite iPhone and iPad apps post, um, basically talking about the fa my favorite and you know most used apps of 2011, um, as well as some apps that you know I've used and think would be good apps to try out. So um, I also did this last year. I did a favorite iPhone apps post of 2010, and uh, you can do that by searching over here. You can get to it or I'll just link it up in the description of this video if you want to see it. So, um, I just figured I'd go over these this list. It's not in any particular order. I just kind of went through the iPhone and the uh, purchase but not on iPhone list on the um, in the App Store and just kind of wrote down the apps and then wrote them in here. So, um, there, there's no particular order. They're all great apps and I'd recommend them all. So, the first app on the list is TweetBot by TapBots. Um, it's a Twitter client, similar to the one that's actually made by Twitter. Um, but this one is, is a little different. It has um, different features. You can slide the tweets back and forth to view you know, um, conversations and stuff like that. It's just a, overall a, a great Twitter application. It allows and supports multiple timelines um, and multi-touch support. So it's, it's just a cool Twitter application to try. Um, so if we go down to the number two on the list, Saver by Alex Solonsky. Um, my apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, so Saver is an application that allows you to track your expenses, um, and you can track it throughout the week, the month, the year. There's there's different choices you have there, um, and it also also actually allows you to tag your expenses using things like, you know, general tags, kid tag, house tag, amusement, wardrobe, uh, basically these tags down here as well as some others. And uh, you can actually, for example, let's say I went out to eat and I wanted to tag my expense and uh, add it to my graph. So what I'd need to do is I'd launch, I'd launch up Saver, enter in the amount, and let's say since I bought food, I would click on the food tag, and then I could further categorize it as let's say restaurant, fast food, cafe, coffee, and uh, it's just a cool way to see what you're spending and you know where your money's going. And when you want to find out how much you spent, you can actually pull up a bar graph, uh, rather a pie chart, and uh, take a look at what you've been spending and you know where your money's been going. Um, and there again, there's uh, views for week, month, and year, so it's kind of cool. You can see how much you've been spending throughout the week, you know, and, and cumulatively throughout the month and year. So uh, I thought it was pretty cool, and I've been using it for a while, and I, I find it quite useful. It's kind of interesting to see how much you actually spend. Um, and it also, uh, on, on the graphs, you can actually, it's all categorized and color-coded, so if you click on one particular color on the graph, you can actually see a list of, uh, you know, the things you've been adding and, and what you tagged them as. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool. Um, the next app, which was also on the list last year, um, and many of you are probably very familiar with it, didn't come out in 2011, but uh, not all of these apps necessarily had to have, um, is Instagram. Instagram by Bourbon Incorporated. And it's, a, it's a photo sharing application. It's a social application as well. Um, and the cool thing about Instagram is that it actually allows you to add filters to your photos, so you can change the look of them. Um, for example, make them look old-fashioned and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. And also... Uh, Instagram allows you to follow other people and view their photos, comment on their photos, like their photos, stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to see what people have been uh, doing and posting their photos. And the filters makes it really cool as well. So um, Instagram's just a cool app if you're interested in sharing photos and stuff like that. It also has support for Facebook and Twitter. If you're interested in that, you can share your photos on Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, so Oink, number four on the list by Milk Incorporated. Uh, this is actually Kevin Rose's new company. He's a co-founder of Milk, and uh, basically, Milk is a basically kind of like a, a think tank, if you will. They come up with applications and make them. So, um, Oink is their first application, and it's a social rating application, similar to a, I guess, a Foursquare, you could say, um, or a GoWalla. Except Oink isn't used to rate places per se. It's used to rate the things inside those places. So, for example, rather than just rating a restaurant and saying they have good food. You can go deeper and be like, uh, this restaurant's cheeseburger is great, you know, you should try it, uh, post a picture of it, and stuff like that. So it's a way for users to see, um, you know, the quality of things inside of a particular place. Um, and it also has a social, like Foursquare or Gowalla, has a social aspect to it, where you can follow other users, see what stuff they've been liking, um, comment on it, view pictures, stuff like that. And um, I believe it also has Twitter and Facebook support, though I might be wrong on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. Um... So Oink is, is just a cool app if you want to check it out. Um, and also add things to your to-do list and stuff like that. So if someone ate a cheeseburger, you're like, oh, I want to try it. 
um, you can do that. And another cool feature about Oink is that it also has location-based um, capabilities. So let's say you're, you go to New York and you want to see, you know, what's the best cheeseburger within five mile radius of me. You can do that, and it's kind of cool. It's a cool way to check out and see what things people are rating. And um, you don't have to necessarily rate food. You can rate anything with it. You can rate a computer, you know, software, stuff like that. It's just a cool app to rate things. Moving on, uh, Tiny Tower is also on the list, and Tiny Tower is the first game that's on the list this year, so uh, Tiny Tower is available for both the iPhone and iPad, and it's uh, by Nimblebit LLC. It's a free application that you can download, and it's basically um, a game where you're in charge of running a tower that consists of various businesses, services, and uh, residents. Um, for example, you can have food services, uh, barber shop, dentist's office, stuff like that, as well as different apartments for the uh, citizens, who are called bitizens in the game, uh, can live and, you know, interact. So basically, um, the goal of the game is to try to get your tower to have more and more levels, um, you know, make the citizens happy and make the shops and stuff run efficiently. Um, but the tricky part is, each time you build a new floor on the tower, it, the next floor gets expensive, so it's kind of, gets, gets more expensive, rather, so it's kind of uh, a fun and challenging game to play. Um, and the cool thing about it is that even if you put your iPhone in standby or close the app, the game still runs. So if let's say you have something in a store and you're selling it, um, you don't have to worry about having to leave the app up and open. Um, so you can just go out and do other things while the game's still running. Um, so basically when a, when a user gets a certain amount of money, they can purchase a new floor for their tower. Um, you get to choose what kind of floor it is. Um, and you can hire residents that are in the floor who live in the... Um, the building's residence um, areas, like apartments and stuff like that, and uh, they can work in the various shops and services that you have throughout your building. And um, you know, some of the the users have um, certain skills that are that are applicable to certain things. So, for example, someone might have their dream job as uh, working in the dentist's office. And uh, if you put them in the dentist's office, they'll be more efficient, and the dentist's office will run more efficiently, I believe. So, um, it's just a cool game to play. Try to challenge up the gameplay and stuff like that. Um, and kind of like Farmville and Cityville, uh, Tiny Tower also allows users to buy things with their with a currency that makes things go a little faster, called Tower Bucks. Um, and these are actually purchased with real money. Um, and they again they they allow users to make things go faster. They allow users to stock stores faster, build more floors, stuff like that. Purchase coins with. So um, they just kind of make the game go faster if you're not into waiting. But they do cost actual money, so it's a uh, kind of a I don't know. I haven't bought any, and the game's still fun, so it's kind of cool. Um, you don't need to buy anything, but again, the game will run a little bit slower, but it's it's fine without it, I think. Um, so, actually, another cool thing about Tiny Tower is that it has like an 8-bit style user interface, and it's kind of it's kind of cool. I don't know. Um, so, I'd recommend you play it anyway. So, recommend uh, number six rather, um, Zombieville USA 2 for the iPhone and iPad uh, by Mika Mobile Incorporated. Um, so the, basically the goal of Zombieville 2 is to take your character around the various cities um, that are in the game and, and kill the zombies. And as each level progresses, the more and more zombies come in and uh, there's different types of zombies which are harder to take down. Um, but you can also buy different weapons including like, you know, baseball bat, knives, guns throughout the game. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily extremely challenging, but it's, it's a fun, fun game with a bit of a challenge to it if you're interested in this type of thing. So. Um, so in the game, you're allowed to carry three weapons. Um, you get to choose what they are, provided you've actually purchased them, and you get to use those to take out the zombies. Um, but you get to be careful of running out, running out of ammo, though there are opportunities within the game itself to get more ammo. Um, it's just a cool game if you like shooters and zombies. And uh, you control it with a little joystick that's uh, on the screen there. It's a touchscreen joystick. I thought that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's kind of a fun game. I'd suggest you play it. Um, it's, it's cool. Moving down to number seven, this is actually um, a cool game slash informational application that I tried out on my iPad a while ago, and it's called Powers of Minus Ten. It's also available for the iPhone and iPod Touch, and uh, it was created by Green Eye Visualization. And it's a, it's a cool application if you're interested in biology and physiology stuff like that. Um, it allows users to zoom in, um, like exponentially, I suppose you could say, and learn about what's going on within the human hand. And it gets down pretty deep to like the cellular and molecular level. And you can actually see what's going on within cells and view how the various molecules and things work within the app within um within the human hand. And now uh, you can also you know use the multi-touch to 
you know, move around and stuff and see how things work within the body. And also, uh, Powers of Minus 10 features, like, game aspects of it, so you can you can learn about mitosis and, you know, stuff like that, and it'll give you a quiz on it and show you, you have to, like, drag the different phases of mitosis and stuff like that to where they belong and which order they're in, as well as information about them. So it's kind of it's kind of cool if you're interested in biology, learning biology, you know, maybe taking a biology class, something like that. Or uh, if you're just plain, you know, interested in the human body, stuff like that. It's a, it has great graphics. It's, it's a really cool application. Um, and it also features, you know, little, like, mini games, I guess you could say, throughout the game. It's like if you click on something, it'll give you information about it, and they'll add points to your um, your score about, you know, how many things you found and stuff like that. So I'd recommend that if you're into biology and stuff like that. Uh, moving on to the last application on the list, it's a game called Where's My Water for the iPhone and iPad. Uh, and it's actually by Disney. And basically it's kind of like an, an Enigma, if you remember the iPhone app Enigma, um, which actually came out with Enigma 2, um, though I haven't tried the second version. So Where's My Water allows you to... Basically you have to... There's an alligator named Swampy, and uh, he's sitting in a bathtub somewhere in the level, and you have to take the water and try to get it to his bathtub. And it, it's kind of like a puzzle application. It's... It's in the likes of like Cut the Rope and Angry Birds and stuff like that where you have to get the water to Swampy's bathtub. So I thought it was a cool application. I tried it a couple days ago and it's it's really fun and there's different challenges as the level progresses. I only tried the free version, but I'm sure the um the paid version is just as good and stuff like that. So I suggest you check it out if you're looking for a cool game. It's kind of kid friendly too because it's by Disney. And uh, the graphics are great, the puzzles are good. Um you know, there's different aspects of it added. So some levels might have a spout. Some levels might not, and you just have to use the water that you're given. So I thought that's kind of cool. So this is it. This is my list for 2000, uh, 2011's apps that I've been using. Uh, and please feel free to post in the comments some apps you've been using, uh, what you think of the apps that I posted here, and um, maybe some app reviews that you'd like to see, and I'll try to get on those for you. Um, anyway, Happy New Year. I hope everyone has a happy, healthy, fun, and safe New Year. And um, thank you for watching.